The first New Testament lesson comes from Acts chapter 3, 13 through 26, and in the Pew Bible is page 772. Acts chapter 3, starting at verse 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate. Though he had, though he had des- decided to let him go, you disowned the holy and righteous one, and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and how was and and know was made strong, it it is Jesus' name. And and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped, wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. He must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised, as he promised long ago through, the, through his holy prophets. For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among, from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from among his people. Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many as have spoken, have foretold these days. And you, you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. The Second Testament lesson comes from 1 John chapter 5, 1 through 6, in the Pew Bible, page 864. 1 John, starting at chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his, his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands, and his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that, that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water, blood, or by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by the water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. Will you please rise for the gospel reading? The gospel lesson comes from John chapter 20, 19 through 31 page 769 in the pew in the pew bible john chapter 20 starting at verse 19 on the evening of that that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fears of the jews jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you after he said this he showed, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. 
Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put, your, and put it into my side. Stop, stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This ends the, reason, the reading of the gospel. You may be seated. One of the most common greetings in the New Testament is, peace be with you. Jesus greeted the disciples that way uh, in the gospel lesson when he appeared to them. Peace be with you. In fact, in our gospel reading today, we see that greeting three times, twice on Easter evening and then once again when Jesus came the next, uh, the next Sunday evening. And we, we hear that, we kind of shrug it off like, kind of like, how are you? Fine. You know, we really don't mean anything, it's just what we say. But it's more than that. It's more than just the formality when we see peace be with you. In Romans chapter 5, the Bible says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace comes from justification with God. And so what is justification? And the easy way to remember the definition, that's kind of a big word that we see in the Bible and it's a theological word, is what does justification mean? Just as if I never sinned. That's how God views us through the blood of Christ. Through Jesus' suffering and death, it's just as if I'd never sinned. That, that's what justified is. Where does it come from? It comes, of course, from the blood of the cross. Peter said this at the beginning of his first letter, talking about that very thing. He said, You know it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, without, not by silver or gold, but by the blood of Christ. And that's where justification comes from. The blood of Jesus, the Bible says, cleanses us from all sin. Can you say all sin? All sin. Okay, all. That's a good word. All sin. Not, and that is especially important when your conscience gets you down, when you feel bad, when you're feeling guilty. And you can say, the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. Even the one that's bugging me the most. There's particularly, especially the one that's bothering you. You see, it doesn't depend on you. It doesn't depend on your guilty feelings. It depends on what Jesus Christ did on the cross. You're clean. You're forgiven. That's justification. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 says that in Christ, because of what Christ did, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. Now, it may seem like kind of a minor point, but sometimes you might hear uh, in a movie or some kind of other place that uh, God was being reconciled to, to the world. 
No, that's really not right. God was reconciling the world to himself. God didn't need reconciling. He's perfect. Always has been, always will be. We're the ones that need reconciling. In Jesus Christ, he reconciled us back to himself. God reconciled the world to himself. We're forgiven. We are restored. We're brought back into that right relationship with God. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing we have the creation story in the Bible. That tells us, that, you know, it shows us the way God intended things to be. The Bible says God came down and walked in the cool of the evening with Adam and Eve. And you can just get the picture of perfect peace and tranquility and everything is great. The good old days was whatever moment it was. And that's the way things are intended to be. Relationship with God, perfect peace and contentment. And so in God, in Christ, because of God reconciling us back to Him, we have peace. Now Psalm 85 verse 10 makes an interesting statement. It has kind of a picture and it personifies certain values. It says, says this, Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. It's like old friends coming together and you greet and hug and kiss and all that. And here it's, it's about love and faithfulness and about righteousness and peace. And notice that righteousness is linked together with peace. And that's not an accident either. We, of course, we've been talking about Christ suffering on the cross. And that's the picture of perfect righteousness. Christ was perfectly righteous. He had peace within himself. His righteousness bought us peace with God. And Isaiah 48, verse 18 also says this, If you had paid attention to commands, my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your righteousness like the waves of the sea. And so we see in the Bible, in this, these places and other places as well, righteousness and peace are not only linked together, righteousness produces peace. Not only the righteousness that we receive from Christ, His righteousness gave us peace, but also the righteousness that we do produces peace. When you sin, and especially if you don't confess it and receive forgiveness, what's the first thing you lose? Peace. It's that guilty conscience. It comes and kind of bugs you. You lose your sleep. You're, you're, you're disturbed. You're upset. Maybe you, your appetite doesn't work quite right until that's taken care of. So we see righteousness produces peace and unrighteousness, uh, unpeace. I'm kind of missing the word there, but uh, it's, it's righteousness produces peace. But the Lord wants us to have peace. The Bible's quite clear on that. And we know from that famous passage in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, goodness, and all those things. But peace is part of what comes to us as a, a gift from God and as a consequence of our being in Christ. We know also that fear destroys peace. But what is fear exactly? Fear is just worrying about self. We're self-centered by nature, by sinful nature at least. And when we are anxious about my welfare, about me, about what's going on to number one, that's fear. But the Lord tells us in the Bible, fear not. Someone said that fear not in some form occurs in the Bible 366 times. That's once for each day of the year. God wants us to fear not. David says in the Psalms, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can anyone do to me? And that's true. You know, we can kind of take the worst case scenario. What's the worst that can happen? Jesus said, Don't fear those that can kill the body. They can't do anything to your soul. What's the worst that can happen? The Lord is on my side. Therefore, I will not fear. Jesus said, don't worry about food and drink and clothes. Don't worry about the things of this life. Rather, seek first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, that is the things that belong to this world, all those things that we need will be given you. Peter, quoting David in the Psalms, says, Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And so we see we get peace not just from the righteousness of Christ, but also when we practice righteousness in our daily lives. Do good and enjoy peace. And we see in the Easter story uh, that we read today, it was uh, Easter evening and also the week after, the disciples were huddled together in fear. They did not have peace. They were concerned for their own safety. They knew that since Jesus had died, they were next on the number one hit list. They were the ones that were disturbing the peace of, Jer of Jerusalem, according to the authorities. They were preaching an upside-down gospel. But they also knew they had denied Jesus. They had fled from his side. And they didn't believe he'd rise again. They didn't believe the first eyewitnesses. Peace had fled from their lives. And so when Jesus came, the first thing he said was, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Before his death, he had promised them that they could have peace. He said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. It's kind of like in the children's sermon, that joy that we have, it's beyond all earthly types of happiness. It's something that comes from above, and it's perfect, and this peace that Christ gives is the same way. It's not the kind of conditional peace. It's not just absence of war. It's not just... Uh, burglary security in your home or insurance. I saw in the paper this morning, would, do, would you want peace? Sign up for such and such insurance. That's a conditional peace. Christ gives a real peace, a true peace, an eternal peace. Are you trying to slog through life without that type of peace? You can have peace just as surely as Peter and James and John and the rest. You're not sure Jesus is really God, maybe sometimes? You're not sure that Jesus rose from the dead? The disciples weren't sure either, even after they had heard reports of it. We remember reading about doubting Thomas, but they all doubted in Mark chapter 16, uh, in Mark's account of the resurrection Sunday. Mary Magdalene, I went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping, and when they heard Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they didn't believe it. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported it to the rest, but they didn't believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating, and he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him but the point being even in the midst of our doubts Jesus came he came to them he'll come to you too seek him anyways Jesus still came come to Jesus and have peace you may miss church too much maybe you or someone you know doesn't know the Lord too well maybe someone you know doesn't appreciate the Lord's day or honor it as holy. Thomas missed out on Easter Sunday. It says when Jesus came and appeared to the disciples, he wasn't there. We don't know the reason. We're not given that. We know he was a faithful disciple, but for some reason he wasn't there that first Easter Sunday evening. But the next Sunday he was there, and the Lord came especially for Thomas. Don't give up. Meeting together, the Bible says. Thomas missed out, but the Lord came especially for him. Return to Jesus. Return to his people and have peace. Perhaps you're feeling you're not as good as you ought to be. I'm not a worthy Christian. I don't deserve the Lord's blessings. I don't deserve to have peace. Look at all the stupid things I do. 
Well, newsflash, none of us deserve it. None of us deserve any of God's blessings. But further than that, some who wrote most emphatically about God's peace in the Bible committed some of the most grievous sins ever committed. David, as king, he had everything. He had riches, he had wealth, he had everything he could want, including multiple wives, and yet he committed adultery. Took the wife of one of his trusted warriors and then had his, her husband killed. Peter denied even knowing Jesus. P Peter, the right-hand man, the leader of the apostles, cut off a man's ear against Jesus' will and then denied knowing Jesus. And the Apostle Paul, who wrote 13 of our New Testament books, was a persecutor of the church. If anyone knows about unworthiness, surely they would. And yet, they wrote how we can have peace, even as they did. Submit to Christ and have peace. Peace is part of our Christian heritage part of our birthright as sons and daughters of the King. Live as children of the Heavenly Father. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, Jesus told us. Love your neighbor as yourself. As those passages in Psalms and Isaiah remind us, do good and have peace. Or maybe you're filled with worries and anxieties and cares. We all have them. It's not a matter of if we have problems, if we have worries and cares. They happen. That's part of life in this world. It's what we do with them. But if you have more troubles than you can shake a stick at, that's okay. Take them to the Lord Jesus. Paul writes this in Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Give thanks and pray to God and have peace. The Lord Jesus rose from the dead to give you life to give you peace. Accept Him. Accept His peace. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing our sermon hymn, Because He Lives.
prayer requests this morning? Received requests by uh, Joyce Walter, who had a stroke. Kutura had a concussion this past week, and she's getting over that. And uh, Danny Yarborough, are there others? 